Hello and welcome. For today's painting project, we are going to paint night skies and fireflies, this beautiful nighttime scene. For supplies for today's project, you're going to need a set of brushes. I will be using a number 12 flat brush, a number 8 filbert, a number 6 bright brush, a big round brush and a little round brush. Today I'm using a number 4 and a number 1 round as well as a nice small little quarter inch flat brush. This is a number six flat brush. For colors for today's project, we will be using phthalo blue, deep green permanent, medium yellow, titanium white, and a nice big blob of black. Have a nice big jar of water handy dandy, as well as some paper towel or an old rag. As an option, you may wanna have some glazing liquid but you can do anything I'm gonna be doing with glazing liquid today with plain water. We're gonna to begin today's painting by pulling on the background, the sky and these blowing grasses, then pulling on the foreground objects, our tree, and then finally our fireflies. So let's go ahead and mix some of these lovely fade colors for our twilight scene. I'm gonna be mixing all my colors with this number six bright brush. We've got a fade from a light yellow to a dusty teal to some dark phthalo blue colors. So we're gonna start, dip your brush in some water, and I'm gonna mix a small scoop of yellow into this blob of white. And the Liquitex Basics paints and the Liquitex Heavy Body are quite thick, so I'm gonna spend a little time kind of mooshing it together with a little bit of water. I'm trying to get it to be the texture of yogurt as opposed to really thick like toothpaste. This is gonna help me get a nice smooth blend in my background. So I wanna have this nice kind of pale yellow color here. Okay, great. Now you can get that consistency with just water and paint until it's more the consistency of yogurt. And you can always add glazing medium to your paint instead of water. It has, it has the benefit of also being slow drying. So if when you're blending your colors, you find they dry out a lot, you may wanna try adding small daubs of glazing liquid into your paint as well. Rinse your brush, tap it off on a napkin. Ooh, I'm gonna move this little blob of white over. So I've got a bit of room in between colors. Now we want to mix our cell, this sort of medium dusty teal color that we have here. So we're going to take a blob of white and then a small amount of blue. And I like going into a nice bit of green and then let's mix it together. And I want to get a lovely dusty teal color. So I'm going to add a bit more of the green here. And once again, you can add a little amounts of water or glazing liquid or both. Okay. Add some water here. There we go. Okay. So we're going through the fade from the lightest colors to the darker colors. So we're gonna go into some plain blue, but I like to transition with a little bit of a lighter blue first. So I'm gonna take this blob of phthalo blue that I have here, I'm gonna move it over just so we can see the fun gradient. I'm gonna take a little bit more phthalo blue. Right, so I'm gonna add some white to it until it's more this sort of lighter medium peacock kind of blue. So I'm gonna add the white here really slow, just a little blob into this. This is about three parts blue to one part white. I wanna have a nice transition, yellow, teal, medium blue down into this dark blue. I'm gonna add the white slowly, there we go. And again, you can add glazing liquid or just water, or just water is fine. Anything to get your paint to that nice consistency for mixing. Okay, this is gonna be a lovely fade. So I'm gonna kind of squeeze out all my excess color, rinse my brush, and we're gonna start coming up 
with our fade. Now I'm gonna use a two brush technique to get a nice soft transition. So I'm gonna pull the paint on with my number eight filbert, and then I'm gonna soften it together with this big number 12 flat brush. Now you can do the two brush blending technique where you soften it together with any kind of brush. I have a mop brush here, and a mop brush is great for softening colors. This one is designed for watercolor, um, but it works for acrylic as well. It's almost, it's almost a little a too soft and floofy. This is for watercolor. My acrylic mop brush is a little bit more uh, short and a tiny little bit more stiff. But you can use any big soft brush to soften colors together. First, we're gonna pull on our gradient. So grab your number eight filbert. Let's go into our lightest color. Now we wanna pull across our horizon line. Typically, I have just a little bit more of the sky than the land. So I like having a nice bit of grass in this landscape. I'm gonna grab a generous blob of color and back and forth, back and forth. Most of the sky is dark. So when you're ready, go right into your teal and you don't have to wash your brush. Start right on top, that dusty teal. And now we're gonna start the blending process by bringing one color down, down into another, and then up, 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 down. I'm gonna soften this together later, but for now I'm gonna continue on up. And I wanna start getting quite a bit darker here. There's a lot of white in both that yellowish color and in our teal, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I do in fact wanna add a little bit more white right to the base of my horizon. I find my yellow is a little too strong for my liking. So I'm just gonna pull up some white to get the color that I want. Rinse again, because I wanna get dark. I'm gonna go right into this medium blue. Big scoop, big scoop. So we're just bringing one color up to the other color until they touch. I'm just gonna soften this line a little bit by coming down and then up. And I can buff out these brush strokes even more if we work soft, fast and loose. We can kind of buff these colors together while they're still wet with one of these big soft brushes. So I'm gonna keep on keeping on right into this plain dark phthalo blue. I'm gonna pull over a, a generous amount of this to the top. Shimmying at a medium pace, slow but steady, kind of wins this race. So you know, this is a decent fade, but you can see all those brush strokes in it. So if we take a soft brush, like a mop brush if you have it, or just this big number 12 flat, I'm gonna start in this light color. And I'm just gonna gently hover over top, side to side. So what I'm doing here is I'm effectively going to buff out all these brush strokes, side to side side to side has to be soft and the paint has to be a little bit damp in order for you to hover these together and then we're going to get rid of any of those big brush strokes again if you're working with a mop brush that's those big ones that look like makeup brushes it's the same you're going to just gently tickle the surface up when you have a fade that you are happy with. Okay, great. Pause this video anytime you need to. And the nice thing about the paints I'm using today is they have really excellent coverage. They're nice opaque paint. However, you may be working with a paint that's a bit different and maybe you're finding your paint is really not covering very well. In that case, don't panic, just pause the video and you can do another second coat on your background blend until you get it as rich and juicy as you find pleasing for you and your project today. 
When you're ready, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is gonna be splattering the stars into our night sky. And one of the fun things about this painting is the way the little luminous bugs meet the stars and they kind of meld together for this just glittering night scene, this glittering landscape. If you prefer a more controlled look, you can hand paint the stars. However, I love that there's the hand painted fireflies mixed with the splatter of the stars. I think it's a fun bit of contrast. If you're gonna splatter along with me, we do need to make sure our paint is a lot more runny. So I'm gonna take this brush here, this little number six flat, and a small amount of my pure titanium white. You don't need very much. This is even a handsome amount. I could use a little bit less. I'm gonna move it over somewhere that I can drip a great deal of water into it. And typically I do enough water until it is as thin and runny as milk. You know, if you think about splatters as spray, we're essentially spritzing this paint and if it's too thick, we're gonna get lines instead of little tiny dots. So we want a, a spray instead of a heavy squirt. So this consistency being really milky is important. And then to splatter, you're gonna take that brush, pull the bristles back towards you. Of course, we're gonna aim them down at the canvas Pull back and then let go. And you can do that quite quickly. So I'm pulling back, 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 back. <laughs> it's gonna travel onto this other painting. If you're painting with a partner, you know, sharing is caring, as they say. But the splatter does tend to travel. And you could go easy with the splatter or heavy. I tend to love a really populated night sky with lots of Little stars, I think it's quite magical. You can splatter with a toothbrush and that kind of thing. But you know, if all you've got is a brush, they are one of the handiest tools to splatter with. So here we go, we've got our nice fade. We've got some splatter stars. Please pause and take as much time as you want. This is your painting day. And when you're ready, meet me back here. We are going to put in the ground where our fireflies live. They love living in long grasses and bushes. So we've got these long grasses kind of blowing in the wind. So that's what we're gonna do next is we're gonna start working on our ground and incorporating some greens into there. I'm gonna put out another little squirt of white or two. Rinse off your number six bright brush. I'm gonna start at the horizon line here with a nice little bit of, it's almost a baby blue, and then working our way into some lighter greens and we're gonna come down side to side, so horizontally with some streaks of color. After that, we're gonna start pulling grasses up and overlapping them a bit, but let's start coming down a lot of the way with these nice horizontal bands where the ground is nice and far away. I'm gonna take some water I'm gonna mix some white and some blue together until I get a nice kind of baby blue color for the top. And I'm also gonna mix some white into some green. So I've got a bit of a lighter green. Please keep some of your dark green for later. Maybe I'll put a bit of yellow in here too. There we go. So we've got some baby blue, some permanent green, dark permanent green mixed with some white. And then we're gonna start to pull down side to side. Before I start pulling in these lighter colors of the background, I do like to place a bit of a marker for the shadow that is gonna be underneath our tree. So if we look at where the tree is in this composition, it really, if I were to cut it in half, the tree really sits on the left hand side of the painting and it's very close to the top. I like having a little trunk that kind of crosses right from about here up. So you know if I'm plotting out my composition I want to have a shadow kind of sitting in this area. It can breach the center a bit and then I want to kind of put a little ball where I'm kind of mapping out the habit, the 
uh, growth extent of the tree ball, kind of mapping out the ball shape of the tree at, at the top, little trunk here. And then we're gonna just map out our composition where we're gonna have the shadow underneath. So I'm gonna rinse off my bright brush for a second here. And I'm gonna take a scoop of this dark blue, maybe mix it with a scoop of the dark green, just a nice dark color that's not quite black. And I'm gonna put that shadow in just kind of as a marker. We'll beef it up later with some black, but I'm gonna have this shape. And it definitely has to peter out at the edges. It looks quite big now, but that's okay because we're just gonna get blended in and merged with the light colors as we start to come in here. So mix some of your phthalo blue and your dark green. Pull in where you wanna rough in that shadow, just map out that composition. And for a minute for me, really kind of imagine where you're gonna see the top of the ball of the tree, the leaves, all that foliage. So we're gonna start coming down using the, the bright brush. Come into your pale blue and we're gonna come right across our horizon line here. This is where I like to try to straighten it up. We'll pale blue. And some pale green. Coming kind of right up close to this shadow and all around. Just little streaks of these two lighter colors to start. And I'm gonna start just by hovering around it. Kind of getting a nice layer of paint down here. Getting into some plain dark green, little streaky dickies. Okay. Now it's time to feather in that shadow. So it doesn't look just totally alone there. And I like to be fairly generous with my paint in the lower part of the painting. So a nice smooth washiness up top and then a really rich amount of thicker paint towards the bottom. Okay, so we've got our shadow and we've pulled some color around it. Now we wanna tap off any excess paint here or you could grab you know, your um, filbert brush as long as it's clean and a tiny bit damp and we're just going to feather the edges in here a little so I don't want to change the shape too much and it's okay if you lose most of your shadow but I want to kind of soften it in this is blending but it's kind of spot blending this is gradient blending but this is kind of just softening areas of color together Controlled blending it can be a bit tricky, but don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna go over our shadow with some black later on. For now, let's just get some little streaks of a few different colors in here. Pulling some of my medium blue in here. This is the ground, so you can have all kinds of little divots and dips. It's nice to have some bits of texture. Good. So we want to get some of these lighter bits of our grass in, and then we're going to start pulling up some darker bits of grass. And to do that, we're going to need some of our pure dark green and some of our pure dark phthalo blue. When you're ready, give your number six bright brush a bit of a rinse. And we almost have a bit of an angle kind of coming up here with our grasses. They're whooshing off to the side. So whoosh, 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 whoosh. Make sure you've got some of your plain phthalo. I've got this kind of fun mix of the phthalo blue and pure yellow together. That makes a nice dark green too. So I'm going to take this bright brush and I'm going to hold it on a bit of an angle and I'm going to start to come up and down, up and down and we'll pull on some black after. But for now, get 
some plain phthalo blue. We just want some dark bluish green kind of colors in here. And we're gonna come up, 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 up. Little pulls, little pulls. Creating this field of darker grasses. I love the look of mixing the plain yellow with the phthalo blue. And you can see the direction of brush strokes as they dry. So I love getting kind of just carving in here with a bright brush. Nice juicy layer of paint. And I've got some smaller little fields of color up here. So taking my brush on a bit of an angle and I go right into some of that plain green. So smaller pulls, this is further away. Can be really loose up here. So if you're more of a control painter, you need to just kind of relax and let go. And I do find holding my brush farther away is really helpful for trying to get those loosey-goosey strokes. Now it's farther away up here, so maybe another little wiggle of color. A little wiggle. Now maybe even darken a few of these little lines. You see how I have some streaky deekies up here already. So let me just come into a little green and drag some along even darker in parts of your shadow if you'd like. Just hover it on in. The marks as they get farther away are going to get smaller. Back here is off in the distance. Okay. And can you see, and I hope it picks it up on camera, where the uh, brush has actually kind of gouged into these grassy parts. And I think that looks really lovely. And we're gonna go ahead and add some blacks here later on. But for now, this adding a nice amount of paint and gouging into it. And you can keep uh, stroking these grasses with your brush as your paint starts to dry. And don't be afraid to play around with this type of grassy landscape. It is so much fun to kind of tweak as you go. So I could rinse off my brush and come into some of this light green and add a few more streaks on. Now remember when we have this kind of wet paint, it's all gonna blend down if we kind of keep streaking it together. But you can kind of tweak this sort of paint forever, this sort of background. You can keep adding to it and you can smoosh some colors in while it's still wet. And if you want a really distinct bit of color, if I wanted to make it really light, you know, of course we'd have to wait for it to dry a bit, but you can kind of keep adding and adding to it. And that's what we're gonna do today is we're gonna add another layer of black on here but we're starting with these beautiful, deep, greeny-blue nighttime colors. So take your time with this part of the painting. I have painted the same painting before. This is a tutorial I developed way back in, I think it was 2015. So I've painted this one before many times and I know exactly how I like my uh, paint to be. So if I'm a little bit zippy, that's why. But I want you to just relax and zone in and enjoy this part of your painting. Pause if you need to and when you're ready, meet me back here. We're gonna start to pull in the black parts of our painting. We do need the entire background to be nice and dry before we get those nice deep dark blacks on there. So now's a perfect time to go take a break, go hug your cats, hug your kids, hug your dogs, or if you're like me and you've got that impatient painter gene, you can grab your trusty blow dryer and we'll give this a little blast and then we can keep on keeping on to the next step.
It's time to start adding some blacks into our scene. I like to start by adding my tree and a really simple trunk. So we're going to work with some of our smaller brushes now. And I'm going to take a little round brush and we're going to pull on a trunk and the general area we want our tree top to fill. So again, I like keeping my tree in the left hand side of this painting and I like my trunk to come up. It's going to go straight into this black here to come up and really cross this horizon line here. There's the main trunk here. It's the black line. And I typically have a little you know, branch coming up and off. Okay. So here we've got a little bit of a tree. And then with just a little bit of that black paint kind of staining the brush. So I dip my brush in some water and then I tap most of it off. But there's still some wetness at the base of the trunk. So really just um, tapping that brush off and just kind of staining with some residual black that's on the brush. I'm going to pull a bit of black out into the shadow. It doesn't have to be as big or as wide as that original blue shadow, but just... We'll want to have that there. Okay, then here's our little trunk. Little side branch action. And now we're going to plan the habit of the tree. And that's how far a plant kind of grows out. So typically I just start by giving myself a couple little dots around. It's definitely going to grow from this area. So wherever you put those dots, we're definitely going to pull some branches out and all around. But give yourself a general habit that shows you how tall you want that tree to come to and how far kind of out to the side you want it to come to. So I had my original circle here and you can see I really brought out some of those little bits of foliage. Okay. Now this is a really fun and simple tree and you can use any number of brushes to add the foliage. But one of my favorites is just to use the corner of a square shaped brush. So I'm going to go straight into some black that doesn't have any, that doesn't have any uh, water or medium in it. I want this to be a nice dark color. And I'm going to start kind of tapping in the center, filling in a thicker area of paint. Just kind of tapping that in quite quickly using the flatter side of my brush. Not a full circle, I'm still going to keep it nice and loose. And then once I start to get towards the perimeter, I'm going to turn my brush up. So I'm using just like the corner of it and I'm going to start to tap that. The branch is kind of loosening up here. At this point, when I get to the edge of this kind of rough circle I've created, I'm going to start to loosen up my brush making. I'm going to be more stippled, so dots. And remember, to help with that stippling, hold your brush back a bit. If you feel more comfortable with a round brush, a long point to one, you can use it. I'm just going to kind of tap out. And you know, the branches, they'll come up, out to the side, and even a few kind of coming down. Get more paint anytime you need it. And just keep your strokes nice and loose here for me. They don't all have to be connected. Now some people prefer using a smaller square or a round shaped brush to do their stippling, especially towards that outer edge. So please Feel free to play around with your brushes. I'm going to come in with my number six square here and using the corner of that or edge.
don't know about you, but one of my favorite things to do is to go for walks a little bit more after the sun has set and the trees just start to become silhouettes and they make such beautiful, almost like fractal patterns on the sidewalks where light shines through them. I just moved out to the deep, deep country and we don't actually have sidewalks here. <laughs> I moved from a big city to a little country and there's just so many trees. Uh, I painted this, when I painted this painting, I had to look at a picture of a tree for an example. And today I just looked out of the window and I saw a bunch of beautiful trees kind of billowing in the wind. I think nature provides such wonderful inspiration for paintings. Silhouettes are not only beautiful, but they're uh, quite simple. So they're a great way to kind of get into more natural looking foliage without having to worry about things like our light source. So making sure that you know, each of our stipples is a little bit of a different shape, keeping them organic. This is definitely some sort of maple tree <laughs> in high summer. Where I'm from, the fireflies typically are out doing their mating in July. So please take as much time as you would like to stipple in the shape of your tree. Just have fun with it. I've got a fairly dense mound of, of foliage here and uh, I did that on purpose to have a backdrop for these sparkling little fireflies to be living in this tiny tree or it could be a shrub tree, that kind of thing. Once we have the solid block into our tree area, we're going to pull in black in a few other places including the dark side of the moon and of course the grasses in the foreground here. When it comes time to pulling in the moon, I like using a round brush and you can hand draw your circle, of course, or you can always trace the lid of something circular if you feel like you are challenged with circles. We're going to put our circle in the upper right hand corner. I like to add a little bit of water to my black when I'm going to hand draw a circle. It just helps it flow and it allows me to get that shape. They will grow as we're trying to perfect them and if you're a real stickler and you want it to be absolutely perfectly Circular, go ahead and trace a circular object like the lid of one of your um, paint tubes. And now it doesn't have to be a perfectly dark circle in the first go. I just want you to get that shape on there. are great for trees too. cannot stop tweaking my foliage. Little 
little tweaky deekies. It's nice to take some time, kind of, I like to start a part of a painting and then, you know, go to another area of a painting and then come back and take a look at it, make sure that I'm still happy with everything and do some little tweaks as I go. So we can tweak our circles more, we can tweak our trees more, but while we are deciding if there's anything we want to do in those other black areas, we're gonna start pulling in some of these dark grasses in the foreground. And again, really a little bit down here and coming up, up, up. And the perfect brush for getting grasses is a square shaped brush like your bright brush. Just gonna hold it on an angle and whoop, 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 and it's really great. I always like to add a bit of water into my black whenever I want a bit more of a thin line. So I'm not gonna hold my brush totally up and down. I want it on a bit of an angle and I'm just gonna go up, up, water in here. And I'm allowing quite a bit of that background to shine through. Start with just some little streaks up here. I've got a real field of darkness in this bottom right corner. And this bit of darkness helps balance this kind of darkness in the composition. And of course it really makes the fireflies pop there. So adding this dark here and then the detail there. So I want you to get the three main black elements into the painting, the dark side of the moon, your tree and your grasses. And then we're gonna change this whole painting by adding that magical sparkling glow of the fireflies. And we will require our blacks to be fully dry before we pull them into any part of the painting. And same thing with the crescent side of the moon. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love fireflies. I love any thing in nature that has bioluminescence and fireflies are one of the most magical when you see a bunch of them in a bush. It's typically during their mating season, although even the larvae bioluminesce. So the, the, the eggs can even glow. And part of that glow is a warning sign to predators saying, I'm toxic, uh, don't eat me. So it's part of their defense mechanism. However, they also put on quite the show when it is mating season. So different species of fireflies have different patterns that they emit. And it's one way that fireflies recognize each other. And they also emit different patterns depending on whether they're male or whether they're female. So it's part of the mating practice as well. So essentially you've got your male firefly and he's blinking away and he's trying to catch the attention of the female firefly. And if she blinks back, uh, you know, then it's on. Make a little, a little baby, a little baby glowing larva. So you can allow this to dry naturally. It's a great time to pause and have a break, or you can keep on keeping on with me and I'm gonna hit my painting with my trusty blow dryer.
It's time to make our painting sparkle and glow. I don't know about you, but I definitely got some thicker bits of paint in my tree. And while they're almost dry, I guarantee you if I put any pressure on there with my brush, it's definitely gonna get, it's definitely gonna pull up some of the wet black underneath. So I'm gonna allow these two black elements to dry. And in the meantime, we can go ahead and pull on a lovely, lovely crescent moon. So we're gonna want a little tiny round brush, like a number one or a number zero. And we're gonna go into some of our pure white. And I wanna add a tiny little bit of water here. And that's just any time we want a skinny, more controlled line, it's handy to have a little water in there just to help your paint glide easily from side to side. If you're really forcing the paint around the canvas, then you're gonna lead yourself into accidents and smudges and blobs as opposed to a nice fluid line. Okay. Get a little water in there. Now, we have a circle shape, so we don't wanna pull our crescent moon on the outside of the dark side of the moon, because that would create it being more of an oblong shape of an ellipse. We wanna put it right over top of the, of the black, and you can have your crescent moon facing any way. You could have it on this side, or the top, or the bottom. I always just like mine more towards the left-hand side, although it would look quite sweet on the other side as well. Now the crescent moon is going to take up half of this circle. I typically like to give myself two very, very tiny minuscule dots on each side. I know it's hard to see, but they're there. And then I'm just going to give myself the thinnest line and start in the middle where it can naturally be a bit thicker to tell you get a bit more warmed up. And I'm going to come right along the edge of this black part. If you're gonna make a boo-boo with your crescent moon, it's better to do it towards the inside of the crescent because then we can just use the black to fix it up. Whereas in that star splattered area, it's gonna be harder to just fix it because we've got a bit of a pattern there. So you know, if I make a whoopsie and I come in this way, it's gonna be a lot easier to fix. So you could make a thick crescent moon or really thin, or you could start thick and then go back in there and decide to make it thinner by adding some of your black back into there. There we go, the rather medium sized crescent here. But I could thin it out like this just by pulling some black in the other way once the white is dry. Once you have your crescent moon on, we do need to allow it to dry before we can do any tweaky deekies. And I don't know about you, but I definitely want to do some tweaking to mine. You know, for instance, I don't want my crescent moon to really take up more than half, and I've definitely pulled my little edges down. So I'm going to clean it up with some black later on. But for now, it is firefly time. I know getting the crescent moon just so to your liking can take a little bit of finessing. So pause this video and take as much time as you like. When you're ready, it's going to be time to point on these little glow bugs and to make them look like they're glowing. There's a more see-through layer on the outside of the firefly and then a brighter layer on the inside. To get a see-through layer of paint, you either add water or glazing medium to it. I love having a really, really nice 
bright whitish yellow. I want it to be a fairly pale yellow, but just bright enough that it can distinguish itself from the white twinkling of the stars. So not a super saturated yellow like the plain yellow without anything in it, and not so pale that it, it looks white. I want that kind of buttery yellow. So I'm rinsing off my number six flat brush and I'm gonna take some yellow. I had some of this color mixed up, but it's definitely dried out. And I'm gonna go with something a little like this. And then we wanna make it see-through. So you don't have to make all of your color see-through, but we wanna make quite a bit of it. So use your water until you get your paint the consistency of about yogurt. You can also add some glazing liquid instead of or along with water because it's just see-through just see-through paint. You can use matte medium as well. The difference between glazing liquid and matte medium is matte medium doesn't extend the dry time in the same way that the glazing liquid does. Okay. I like using a nice round shape brush to pull on these little fireflies. So I'm going to rinse and tap Use a number one, two, three, or four to put on the see-through glowing aura of your firefly. You wanna pull on a bit of this kind of watery or medium rich paint and then sometimes I even tap it with my finger and this allows it to become more, more transparent. And also start with just a little bit of paint on your brush. I like having some larger fireflies in the lower corner. So down here, I like to get a couple bigger ones. We want to vary the size. I like to keep my biggest ones on the right hand side. Maybe one big one here. A couple medium sized ones. And then we can have lots of these smaller ones. We're also gonna have many of these living in our tree, congregating right at the bottom. Coming up the trunk and into the tree itself. You can use a smaller brush, like a little number one brush. just all over this little tree doing their summer mating dance.
Once you've got the bulk of them on, just take your time and see if you need a few more in some places. Once you've got the outer glow, we're going to take some of the same color that doesn't really have any water or glazing liquid in it. So some just plain bright color and we're going to put a dot in the center. So here we have our more see-through color here and I'm going to put a really bright bug, buggy body. The outside is their kind of radiant glow and in the inside is where it's kind of got more of a focal point. It's where it's brighter. And you can make this color a little bit whiter too if you need a bit more help distinguishing it from the radiant glow. And you don't have to do this in all the tiny, tiny ones, you know, just the big ones. Just the big ones. Along with adding this sort of magical glimmering dance of our fireflies, I oftentimes like to tweak the stars and add a few more stars into the sky. So sometimes I'll add a few stars that are a bit bigger and we want those to be in the pure white. So tap any yellow off your tiny detail brush. We're going to go into some pure white. And you can see if maybe there's a spot or two you want a, a bigger star. Once you've got all of your magical nature twinkling items on here, it's time to tweak our moon. So if you want to take your moon down at all, I like to use a smaller detail brush. And then we can just come in and carve out with the black on this side. So swooping in and taking away any of the white parts that you don't want. And you can just get the smallest crescent moon this way just by carving in. When you feel like you're done, you can go ahead and sit back, take a deep breath, relax, give yourself a good pat on the back because you have just finished your painting project for today. I always love getting to see your finished versions of these tutorials. So if you share a picture of your painting to social media, be sure to tag me at Keep It Colorful, all one word. I go live here on YouTube once a month. And I also do two free tutorials every week over on my Facebook page or on my website at jessierobertson.com. 
So I hope you have a fabulous day for the rest of it and I will see you next weekend for a new painting adventure. That's it for me everyone. Take care. Bye.